The Wizard of Oz teaches us the profound truth that there is no place like home. And so when I think about Yom Ha'atzma'ut, Israel's Independence Day this year, and the many things I love about Israel, and more importantly, the many people that I love there, I want to start first thinking about this home, about America, and then that other Jewish home, Israel. Some of you know that our four and a half month old daughter was born in Minnesota in the height of the winter COVID surge and in the midst of the political chaos of November 2020. To bring her safely home to San Francisco, we drove an RV to and from Minnesota, and this rather unexpected experience afforded me a lot of time to think about our country while driving across it. It is majestic. And I was grateful that we had time to be with the mountains and the prairies rather than watch the nonstop news cycle. I was grateful for the waitress on the patio of a restaurant in New Mexico who asked about our travels when we shared our story, shared her story of being a Mexican lesbian mom. She insisted that we come back with, her, with our daughter, and we will one day. And I was grateful for the alpaca farmers in Colorado who let us camp on their ranch for a night and who gave us fresh eggs from their chickens. You see, this road trip reminded me that countries are, at the end of the day, just made up of people. Or put differently, people are the thing about a country that is precisely beautiful and lovable and worthy of celebration. Nation states have lots of political problems and limitations, and my personal orientation is not one of strong nationalism for any country on earth. It just makes me a little nervous. But in a different way, I was reminded this past November of how much I love our country. And it is in a similar way that I want to frame how much I love Israel and suggest a way to love Israel and America and really any country that moves beyond the very real and important political questions that all countries face, questions of which are really not about love. In celebration of Israel, here are just a few things that I deeply love about the place that I've been lucky to call home twice in my life. Early Zionist Achad Ha'am wrote, what is national freedom if not a people's inner freedom to cultivate its abilities along the beaten path of history? He imagined Israel as a center of Jewish cultural production and invention, a place where Jewish civilization would continue to evolve and grow. In many ways, his vision has been realized. Jewish culture is not frozen in time, limited only to the memories of great-grandparents. Rather, Jewish culture is the surfer that some friends and I met on the beach in Tel Aviv while eating watermelon and feta salads, who does not believe in God or Torah, but who wakes up every day at sunrise and wraps to fill in. It's also just the way that things feel natural when you are in Jewish space. There's just something about the way Jews do Jewish culture that feels really good to have around you in a way that we can't quite get here. On a lighter note, let's talk about one thing that's just so fabulous about Israel. The food. And I don't just mean falafel, which honestly I can go either way with. Although, have you tried the stuffed falafel at Abu Salim in the hate? Trust me. No, I'm talking about the incredible and inventive food scene that has emerged in recent years in Jerusalem and Tel Aviv and other places. As I was writing the sermon, I just checked the menu of one of my favorite restaurants in Jerusalem, Machane Yehuda, the restaurant, not the market. And they are currently serving a starter dish called Tomatoes in an Identity Crisis with Tahini and Chala. I'd order it for the name alone. And of course, Israeli foods tell a deeper story, because in the mix of flavors and traditions, you find the stories of all the places that Jews have lived in the world, sometimes in the same dish. Finally, something else I love about Israel is the land itself. America is majestic, glorious, and unquestionably beautiful, but for me, the land of Israel is sublime. If you don't have some sense of holiness while watching the sun rise over the Negev desert or while hearing the prayers of Jews, Muslims, and Christians rising up 
over the hills of Jerusalem, you are not paying attention. From the peace of the olive trees to the splendor of a day on the beach of the Mediterranean, it is indeed, as we say in the Birkat Hamazon, an Eretz Tova, a good land. Uvarachta et Adonai lohecha al ha'aretz ha'tova, asher natan lach, baruch ata Adonai al ha'aretz vi al ha'mazon. Give praise to your God who has given you this good land. We praise you, O God, for the land and its sustenance. There are many things that trouble me about so many of the governments of our world, including those of Israel and America. Nations don't always live up to the prophetic and ethical vision of Torah, and it's always our obligation to demand more. And as we celebrate Yom Ha'atzma'ut, let us love Israel with a true and good love, a love of complexity, and a love that is about the commitment to growth and future. For indeed, there is no place like home. Shabbat Shalom.